Welcome folks, I'm Melanie Krauss. I'm the winemaker for Cinder Winery and we're here in the Cinder Tasting Room filming live from Garden City, Idaho. Thanks for coming. So we're gonna feature Malbec today. If you haven't already opened your glass, please join me. I'm gonna pour myself a glass and one for Joe as well. I'm not sure where he went, um, but hopefully he joins us soon. And in the meantime, I should tell you, this is uh, part of a series. So since we couldn't do our release party this year we're going to go through all of the new release wines we have including the rosés we have nine total so at least a nine week um, series here every Friday at five o'clock so this week Malbec next week Syrah and the Friday right before Mother's Day I'm really excited to do a um, a tasting with our rosé the reason I'm excited about that is because we are releasing three rosés for Mother's Day this year. They're all very distinct from each other. Uh, one's made from Syrah, one made, is made from Sinso, and one's made from a combination, a GSM combination. It's Grenache, Moved, and Syrah. So I'm really excited to um, have those three rosés in my arsenal during this time, and I'm hoping that the mothers will appreciate it. So here we go, try out the small deck. Ooh. Hey, Boba Fett. Is that you, Boba Fett? <laughs> it's Hi, your Joe. husband. Hi, Joe, nice COVID-19 outfit. Absolutely, I'm looking for... Have some Malbec. I'm looking... Mmm. Looking forward to tasting some of the small back. Hi everyone. Uh, all right, so small back. You're mm. first. Cheers. Let's do a little toast. Cheers. Everybody out there in TV land. So Joe, uh, it's been a busy week here at the winery and we've got some cool news, right? Since last week, can you tell us about that? Ooh, like announcements and stuff? Yeah. All specials. Right. Ooh, specials, yes. Um, let's see. Well, the big, big news for uh, our local following is that not only is our drive through window open, but flask fills are happening. So here uh, is the beautiful example of our flasks, and we're filling them again. Um, I know people are really happy about that. Uh, when you come and pull up, we're taking all the appropriate uh, precautions to make sure uh, things are as, as safe uh, as possible You know, with, with COVID-19, but it's a really good setup. We've got that going on. Um, also, we have our Syrah uh, coming up next week and our Malbec featured today. And both of those wines, the Syrah and the Malbec, they're on special. So if you buy six bottles or more, you get 10% off. That's an additional 10% on top of any other discounts you might have in case you're a club member. So we've got that going on. Um, and we've got the flasks going on. We have local hand delivery going on, deals there for folks in the Boise area. Um, also, uh, if you buy six bottles or more, free shipping. Six bottles of anything, free shipping, FedEx ground um, to folks outside of uh, the Boise area. Uh, and then, of course, you mentioned already the Mother's Day wines, um, I think, or at least you mentioned a little bit about how we have three rosés coming out, and that's a, a really big deal. And for all the gentlemen out there um, who have a mother, which should be all of you, um, or who have a wife and mother at home and little kids running around, we've got a great Mother's Day special. Check out the website, cinderwines.com. We have what's called our uh, bouquet of rosés, and that's really nice. And there's going to be something really cool in that. There's going to be, if you get that bouquet of three rosés for your wife or for your mother, Inside will be a, a link to a special private um, tasting that Melanie is going to record, uh, which should be pretty hilarious, um, and it's going to be just for mothers. Um, and that will be up on YouTube, on our YouTube channel as well, which is uh, check out YouTube Cinder Wines uh, for that information. So, yeah, that's the, those are the updates. Oh, yeah. I'm the and update man. we have our competition that's ongoing, the Where Do You Cinder 
competition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've got our finalists. They're posted. You can check them out right now They're on awesome. Facebook or Instagram. And then at the very end of this, we will announce who won this week. Yeah, those photos have been awesome. Um, and uh, keep them coming. And we're going to do that every week as well. So, uh, but wow, Malbec. I guess we should get to the meat of it. Hopefully everybody out there in, uh, in Facebook land, you've got your bottle open. It's Malbec. Mm -hmm. Melanie, this is, it's a gorgeous bottle. Um, it's a really lovely red wine. Um, but this is the first time that we've ever put Malbec 100% in the bottle, right? Yeah. That's right. And we're going to probably have a lot of questions from folks out there. So go ahead, type them out. We have um, Tyler, our tasting room manager. He's answering some questions as we go along on Facebook. But Haley is also um, watching, uh, and she is transferring questions to us. And Haley's our assistant winemaker. So she was involved in this recipe, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, so Malbec, um, we'll get some questions from you folks. Well, but, also, yeah. I'm curious, what is everybody eating with it? Are you pairing mm. it? Or do you just have pairing um, ideas? Mm -hmm. As you taste it, maybe you're getting ideas for the next time you... you. Uh... <laughs> this is in interfering with the aromas of the wine. Can I take it all off? It's got, I think you can take that off. It has a bit of a plasticky smell, mm. but uh, we're staying safe around here. Good. Okay, so... Yeah, shoot us some pairing suggestions or what your aromas are getting, uh, what aromas you're getting. Um, but I am picking up right off the bat, like this is this is clearly not our Syrah. This is not our, our, our Tempranillo. This isn't our Valentina. This is really unique. And the, the aromas I'm getting, white tea and raspberry. I mean, so strange white tea i don't know if that's almost like a it's some sort of a floral note i'm gonna call it white tea yeah i mean herbaceous. i think white tea sounds really good uh as a descriptor for this it's interesting because tea's powerful you know it smells powerful and i think that's one of the most unique things about malbec is how aromatic of a wine it is and one of the things you were mentioning is that we've we haven't produced a standalone malbec yet um We've always been blending our, our Malbec into our Valentina blend. We didn't have very much up until a couple years ago. And so we've, we've been hiding this in the Valentina? Yes. In all these years? But it's been enhancing the Valentina, so okay, it's been okay. Fair enough. So when it's inside of a Bordeaux blend, which is what our Valentina is, it's a Cabernet, Merlot, and then a little bit of Malbec. What I think the Malbec does is just totally make the, the aromas more flashy. It kind of brings the brings the game up on the aromas but Malbec is similar somewhat to Cabernet Merlot in terms of texture tannin profile um, overall flavor profile like the really red fruits like raspberry and stuff okay so, so I'm not was, crazy there's raspberry in here there's yeah, raspberry tastes like it's me aromas in here yeah but you don't put raspberries in do you nope it's just grapes and yeast yeah, yeah. I dig it um, so Malbec tell us a little bit about the grape itself um you you've got a, a few more of it you've got a, i thought our daughter was going to come into the screen there for a second but she just waved she's so, probably too shy yeah um tell us a little bit about the malbec uh and the grape itself i mean more is being planted and and why do you why are you enjoying it so much i mean i'm, I'm enjoying the wine but um what kind of got you interested in the beginning well, what I love about um, Malbec for Snake River Valley specifically is that Malbec's a super vigorous vine. It wants to grow like crazy. If it gets all the water it wants, it'll have berries that are this big. It'll have leaves that are just, they're like dinner plate size. Um, so it needs to be hemmed in either by Mother Nature or by the growers. And in the Snake River Valley, we can do a little bit of both. So what do you mean by hemmed in? Well needs to be held back like not as much water as it wants um hmm. not too much organic matter in the soil things that will keep it from growing tons of leaves and vegetation keep it focused on its grapes so if the grape thinks eh, this isn't the coziest conditions then it will put more energy into its reproductive organ the the um 
grape and the seeds instead of because vines can reproduce by sending out big runners dropping down onto the mm. ground rooting and growing new plants so uh, grapes have two different ways of reproducing but if they don't have enough water then they're going to reproduce through their seed. And so, that's what we want for winemaking. So this is similar, th this is somewhat similar to the story of Tempranillo and why okay. Tempranillo does so well in our region. That's a grape that really enjoys arid, harsh conditions. And, and it sounds like you're describing uh, similar conditions with the Malbec. It enjoys, it enjoys uh, these conditions as well. Is that the case? Yeah, that's right. I mean, generally speaking, here in the Snake River Valley, we grow the grapes that are the tough grapes, the vigorous ones. We don't grow the really wimpy ones that need a lot of coddling as much um, because it's kind of a little bit harsh around here. And so that's why we focus on some of the ones that we do, like Malbec, Tempranillo, um, you know, Cabernet and Chardonnay, those are super tough grapes. Now, it's funny, though, because the way you uh, describe um, sort of what the plant likes itself, um, this is a Bordeaux variety. Is that correct? Yes, it's one of the five wines, red wines that's legal to plant in Bordeaux. But it's not that common, actually, in Bordeaux. Um, they focus much more on things like Cabernet, Merlot, Cabernet Franc. Malbec, they don't raise nearly as much, and I think that's because um, Bordeaux gets too much water for Malbec. So Malbec's much more famous from, say, Argentina, where they're in a climate similar to ours, high elevation, in a rain shadow, really uh, soils that are quite low in organic matter, things so, like that. So these conditions sort of tame the vine. Mm-hmm. Sort of like how you, you tried to, you, well, you tamed me. I'm trying. It's not working very well. Not working? Hmm. Well, it works on this grape. It's very nice. Um, I'm enjoying it. I definitely, I get the red fruit. I think um, I've got, I, Haley's written down some amazing pairing suggestions and um, people are coming up with, uh, I can see some on the board. I don't know if you can see that, Mel, but elk mm -hmm. sausage, somebody mm -hmm. put that out. That's amazing and very appropriate for Idaho. We have awesome elk here um i you know one of the the big heartbreaking things just for our just for our social life uh with the wine club was that we weren't able to have so many beautiful events that we had planned because of because of the pandemic um and some of the pairings that the chefs locally had were fantastic and could you mind sharing a couple of those mel um, yeah let's do the uh this was the menu and hopefully will be after things reopen for the for petite four dinner oh, so wow. we were gonna do a dinner where we paired up petite four i was so excited about it their malbec pairing was going to be lamb two ways harissa rubbed leg of lamb and braised lamb shank arancini i don't know how to say that charred carrots carrot romesco preserved lemon confit relish and goat cheese crumble yeah. Oh man, Sarah and DK were my stomach. I'm just, I'm so hungry thinking about that. And uh, we can't wait until this mess is over and we can go back and continue to have great times with uh, so many of our restaurateurs that I know are really struggling right now. So order out as much as you can uh, at your local restaurants and, and help them out. Uh, that is going to be awesome. That's going to be an awesome time. Um, mm, tell me about where this is from. Is this, is this all one vineyard? Um, no, this is two vineyards. So the oldest block in the in the state, or at least that we buy, that I was telling you about on uh, Sawtooth Vineyard. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that volcanic soil that I was telling you about that right. it's rooted into, that's the origin of the name Cinder after the volcanic soil in the Snake River Valley. And the label as well. The labels are photographs, up close photographs of vineyard soils. Um, blown up, abstracted, so I'm not exactly sure, but that could be the actual uh, Sawtooth Vineyard. Yeah, yeah, and then there's, it could be. There's one other main component vineyard in this. It's the Emerald Slope Vineyard in Adrian, Oregon. Our um, AVA dips over onto the Oregon side. Mm. So It's super beautiful. I could definitely, I could see us continuing to to do something like this every year it's i mean those are two wonderful vineyards the sawtooth vineyard and emerald slopes 
we get some of the best uh, Tempranillo from those vineyards and Syrah as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you could you probably could see more plantings. Is that right? We could see some who out there who wants us to who wants our growers to plant more? Say yes, please, in the comments. But do you think that'll happen? Do you think more people start making uh, Malbec here? Yes, it's happening. You know, there's such a lag between when you plant the grapes and when you taste the the wine. Okay. Um, that what's the what's the time lag? Well, so you plant a vine and it takes at least three, but more likely four to five years before you harvest for winemaking, and then two years to make the wine. So five years um, is a pretty safe bet between planting and when you actually taste the wine. That's a commitment. Yeah. And so in the intervening five years since when that the new planting out at Emerald Slope that allowed us to make the standalone Malbec, in between then there have been other blocks. Um, there's a new vineyard out in uh, Malbec that's... Melba? Uh, Melba. Melba. Yeah, excuse me. Melba, Malbec, same thing. Yeah, yeah I got out, you. Out in Melba, that's Nampa, really exciting. Napa, Napa. There's Idaho people, we get that mixed up all the yeah, time. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of tongue twisters. Mm -hmm. So look for more Malbec in the future, that's for sure. It's super gorgeous. I definitely want this with um, meat. I could even go to the gamier side. I can do the, I could do elk, but I could do lamb on this one as mm -hmm. well. Um, and the, the fruit notes are super fantastic. I see some people um, saying there's a gorgeous violet color to it and what uh, I'd love to ask the audience um, throw out your descriptors too we love to see those um, let us know if you're getting any of that fruit note if it's more red uh, or if it's a darker fruit um, it's really really wonderful and let's ask uh, let's get some questions in here from Haley too and uh, we'll have some fun with that it should be uh, interesting to see what what sort of questions people have besides can you do you mind not at all uh, let me see. Why is there a different label on laissez-faire red on our paper label? Good question. Mm, it's back there. Is that is that is that uh, Ron? Who who asked that? Holland asked that. So um, that's our that's our little sister label, the laissez-faire red. Um, we created that. It's got to be over eight years ago. Um, a lot of conversations over the dinner table, right? We sort yeah. of wanted to, wanted to start a second label, and we had this idea of of creating something that was sort of an ode to all the European table wines that we loved. Um, that's a that's a broad category, um, but I'd say that uh, it's it's fair to it's fair to say that the the things that we really enjoy about a lot of European wines uh, at our table are that they have such a, a wonderful ability to pair with a, a wide variety of foods. So Melanie and I were talking about that, and uh, I remember Melanie mm -hmm. saying, you know, I can make a wine that's that's got higher acidity. I'll pick earlier. I'll do whole berry yeah, uh, I think what fermentation, we, right? Yeah. What we were finding was that as we... Um, when we were having our midweek meals, you know, we're eating just whatever, thrown together leftovers, hamburgers, but we just wanted wine, we wanted good wine, but we wanted wine that was a little bit lighter in body, um, higher in acidity. We weren't really up for, after a long day of work, having a really huge tannic extracted monster of a red wine. Mm -hmm. And so Joe kept querying me about, well, What's why do we like these wines? How are they different? And can we make those? And I said, Psh, of course we can make those. So that was the origin of Laissez Faire Red, um, and we wanted to give kind of a sense of that expectation of of being a, sort of like a Beaujolais style mm -hmm. and with the labeling. So, and that's, that's where I we, came in because that's you married like such a brilliant guy, and I have I had two years of high school French. So, um, Mr. Cazone, I think his name was. I'd have to look that up. Uh, but laissez faire, hands off, let it be. You said essentially you were gonna take a hands off approach to to the winemaking, not as much extraction, uh, really little to no new oak. Um, so you said hands off. I said laissez faire. Boom, we were off to the presses. Trademark that, quick. 
Oh, by the way, I have an important thing to announce for everyone, and that is in this era of COVID, we, you know, we're not doing this anymore. I mean, we can do it because we live together. We can't, mm -hmm. you can't really do that anymore. So I'm recommending just do the eye contact. So get the eye contact. No, but out there. Eye contact. Cheers, everyone. Eye contact. Uh, and that's, I think that's a German cheers. thing. And cheers. And uh, make the eye contact because if not, it's seven years bad sex. Mm. You don't want that. Mm -mm. <laughs> that's bad. That's a divorce. Mm -hmm. Waiting to happen. Oh, another question. Uh, let's see. Yesy. Let's Jessie. go with uh, how long would you let Malbec aerate? Okay, so let's talk about aeration. So when the wine's really young, which this is, if you can aerate it, if you have one of those fancy aerators, you want to pour it in a decanter, that's great. Um, or just pop the cork a couple hours beforehand, swirl it around in your glass a lot. There's a lot of ways you can aerate a wine, but what it's doing is it's allowing the wine to open up a little bit. Um, because this wine's young, it's tight. It's kind of hard to smell. Um, it's a little bit hard to access the flavors when a wine is very young. And then after, say, three or four years from now, it's probably n really not necessary to aerate unless you just love the ceremony of it. Let's do an action shot? Sure. Let's do an action shot because this was a great question. And this was Jesse. Let's do it. And really, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I'd splash it more myself. Splash it more! Get it oh, splashy. Splashy. Throw yeah. it up and down. Maybe do that while I'm walking up and down <laughs> stairs or something. Um, yeah. A and lot of... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, well, yeah. and then if the wine is really old, sometimes you'll decant it. That's just to separate the chunks if you're offended by having chunkies floating around in your chunkies? glass. Chunkies? Yep. Chunkies sound Nothing like... Nothing uh, wrong with that. In, a, in an aged wine, there should be some fallout of those big, beautiful tannins. They bond to each other. The molecules get so gigantic that eventually they come out of solution and they fall out of your wine. And so that's why you might see some crystal-looking things precipitate. in an older wine. Precipitate. They're precipitate. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chemistry Major. Um, so when wine's really old, you can decant if that bothers you. But drink it right away. Don't do lots of aerating of a really old wine. You want to pour it gently and then just start sipping right away because it'll evolve fast and it'll change in your glass really fast. Now here in the tasting room, um, I know Tyler has our team um, decant almost all of our red wines uh, for the first six months that they're, they're out. Um, Syrah, Tempranillo, Malbec, uh, mm -hmm. we're doing that at Valentina. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say that I think it just a l introducing a little bit of that oxygen brightens the wine up, um, which means, Melanie, that we have to finish this yeah. quickly, and then we have to try some of the aerated version. Now, if people don't have something fancy like this, can they just use anything like a, yeah, like like a big a, salad bowl? Sure. Uh-huh. Your water pitcher, a Petri dish. Leather whatever. glove. Yeah, pour, whatever you, pour it into a leather glove. Whatever you drink out of, just don't do the hands. Um, last question. What is your favorite protein to pair with Malbec? Kate mm. wants to know that. Favorite protein, Malbec, Argentina? Yeah. What's it, it's got to be. I don't know. What? You don't know? Here's the truth about the way that I drink my wine. I start with my white while I'm cooking. Then I eat my dinner. And then I drink my red as dessert. But you guys do whatever you want. Ooh. You do drink a lot of white wine while you're cooking, don't you? Yeah. It becomes and almost hazardous. Kind of, I eat my food and I switch somewhere halfway in between. So I drink a red and a white with my food, whatever that is. It could be anything. Yeah. And then I drink my red wine as my dessert. So. Yeah. I think that's that's fair to say. Well, meanwhile, I'm you eating. You should say your favorite pairing because you're the big protein guy. Yeah, no, I mean, I think the, we just had, you just used elk the other night. Uh, Melanie used some elk the other night. It was awesome. I'd say go with, go with the elk. Um, somebody suggested pulled pork. Phenomenal idea. Um, can't go wrong with that. I think with the, with the raspberry notes, it's going to be really, really gorgeous to yeah. have something like that. Well, and even though this has a lot of tannin, I do think salmon would be an awesome pairing because mm. I just feel like the aromatics of Malbec plus the 
wonderfulness of salmon would be a really good pairing. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I agree. I agree. Um, the salmon could work. Salmon and salmon and elk, very northwest, very Pacific Northwest, very Idaho. Yeah. Washington, or Oregon. Sub in your favorite beef cut instead of elk. Yeah, and the Argentinians eat a ton of meat. They actually eat more. Don't they eat more meat per person than than Americans? It's something crazy like Maybe. that, right? Your dad, your parents went. To, Melly's parents went down there, and that was that was what it was all about. It was fine steak and and. Uh, and Malbec. <laughs> That's been a long week. Um, all right, so uh, the competition winner, it's time. Mel, do you want to play Vanna White? Yeah, let me show you what they won. So this is the uh, Where Do You Cinder uh, prize package. And that, <laughs> what do we have in there? We have a flask. We've got a t-shirt, we have a beanie, a, a, a beanie, um, mm -hmm. a toque for my friends up in Canada, I guess they would call that. And we have two of our uh, stemless glasses. And there were a lot of great submissions. Uh, Kaya put the finalists on our Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, don't forget, you can enter um, starting today for next week's drawing. And the winner is, drum roll, Ben King. Ben King, congratulations. Uh, check out his picture on Facebook. It's what I call the socially distant cello performance. Uh, he's outside his house with a, a, um, a tumbler of cinder wine, and it looks like Kitty Corner across his, his uh, street, uh, his neighbor is performing the cello, which is pretty wild. Sounds awesome. See. Yeah, it is. Um, don't forget to, uh, another thing that we have going on. So this is kind of the competition prize time. Um, if you go ahead today if, and you start follow us on Instagram, uh, over between now and the next, uh, broadcast. So anytime this week, if you can follow us on Instagram, you're going to be entered into a drawing for one of our large format Malbecs. Mm, that's pretty bottle. It's pretty bottle. So, and all you got to do is follow us on Instagram, and we're just trying to uh, boost our presence on social media, and we're using this as a uh, totally obvious bribe for you to do that. So, hopefully, you'll go out, like us, uh, and follow us on Instagram, um, and then, oh, uh, our secret code this week. Remember our secret code last week? Mm -hmm. So, here's how the secret code works. Um, for the next 24 hours, if you order uh, online from us or in, um, over the phone, if you order three bottles or more, you're going to get two stemless glasses in your order. Now, this is uh, these are the cut glass German. Uh, what's the company, Mel? Do you remember the company? Schatzweisel. Schatzweisel. What a great German word. Schatzweisel. It's like you stubbed your toe or something. But, you, but in your order notes, if you're placing this online, in your order notes, you need to put this word stemless, okay? Put that word stemless on the order notes um, and three bottles or more, you get two stemless from Cinder. Uh, so pretty awesome. And then finally, uh, what, we, what you guys didn't know was last week, we asked the question of where people were from. Do we have that here? I don't think we have that. Oh, no. Well, Tyler's going to get that for me in just a second. Oh, it's way up here on our notes. Oh, somewhere. that was way up there, there in our notes. Thank you. Tyler, you're the best. Okay, so last week we asked who was the furthest away. And what you didn't know was that there was going to be a, a winner of that, and it was going to be uh, for a $25 gift certificate, uh, gift card, I should say, for Cinder. And the winner is, the winners were Natalie and Patrick Perry, all the way over in, I believe it was Alabama. Um, thank you so much. We miss you. You guys used to live in Boise, I believe, and now we miss you. And we thank you so much for following us. So we're going to send you guys that gift card for $25. And next week, we'll uh, announce uh, the next winner of the of the competition. The secret the prize. The secret prize. The secret yeah. prize. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, we want to thank everybody for their support as usual. 
Uh, we're going to do our sign off now. Uh, <laughs> Mel, do you want to uh, do you want to take us out? Stay classy, Garden City. You just say, and thanks for stopping by. And thanks for stopping by, America. <laughs> and stay classy, Garden City. But thanks for stopping by. And stay classy. Oh, and check out this. We're going to put this on our YouTube channel if you miss it. Thanks for stopping by. And stay classy. <laughs>